Well, hey, everyone. My name is Nathan Jones. And if you're new here, welcome. I like to talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays. And today we are continuing on with our film journey series. This time we got uh, a, a friend of the show uh, who uh, actually is a mutual friend of Mitch Oliver, who was recently on. Uh, this is Dylan Hershick. I hope I said that name correctly, right? Yeah, you did. Excellent. Um, well, uh, Dylan uh, has a short film coming up, but uh, before we talk about that, I, I just want to say, um, you know, welcome, welcome to the platform and welcome to the show. This is uh, this is awesome opportunity um, to get to talk to you. Of course, thank you so much for for having me and taking your time to to chat with me and stuff. Well, thank you. Um, so, Dylan, you uh, you run Versa Films correct and uh is a production company and uh you've put out uh several music videos i mean i've watched uh quite a few of them uh of bands that i really enjoy like uh, senses failed uh, thinking about them back in the day i mean this this makes me think of like 2004 a uh, senses fail um it's, it's so crazy um and of course angel maker and, and recently spirit box which has just blown up over the last few years and i i really mm-hmm. I really dig their work and I love their, I mean, they just put a single out not too long ago. Right. And it, mm-hmm. it looks great, but I, I love your work. Um, and Thank you. yeah, so I, I, but, but you have something, you know, pretty big and something you're doing yourself on the horizon when you want to tell us more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'm trying. I, uh, so like you said, I run a production company called Versa films. Um, I do a lot of music video stuff. Mostly what I'm known for is like, really heavy narrative (laughs) music videos um so like with spirit box constance uh, with senses fail i'm sorry i'm leaving was all narrative and stuff and uh i've been kind of scared to take the next step in my career for like quite a while now and that next step has always been like i want to make features i need to make a short film and i've had this idea uh with me for a very long time that it's a little bit of like reflecting on my youth as like a little like punk emo kid in the mid 2000s when myspace was cool and my hair was even more ridiculous than it is now and uh yeah the film is it's not my life but it's inspired by a lot of the things in in my uh, teen years so half of the story is going to be about uh this teen boy and this teen girl just like messing around as teenagers, like finding themselves through the music scene. And then the other half is going to be super personal. Uh, I was the kid brother of, of three brothers and both of my older brothers were in a metalcore band in the mid two thousands, uh, early 2010s, I guess. And, uh, it was like my obsession as, as a, a teen. Cause I, I admired them so much. And like, my dream wasn't to be a filmmaker. My dream was for them to become like, the next the devil wears prada or like bring me the horizon or something like that and what crushed me as a teenager was their band falling apart and breaking up uh because i thought they had so much potential and and witnessing like things that just don't work the wrong like band members not able uh being able to kind of like sync up and 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 just put in the work and stuff and yeah it was heartbreaking and the film is a little bit about that and it's about kind of like forging your own path because I I didn't feel like like I had my own path I was so heavily influenced by my brothers that I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about who I was and that's what the film is going to be about Um, I guess I haven't said the title the (laughs) the film is called Our Last Day as Kids Um, it's going to be roughly a 30 minute short film and uh, to make it happen, the only way we can make it happen is, unfortunately, we have to crowdfund and we're on Kickstarter uh, just because it's it's insanely ambitious. Um, if you've seen any of my music videos, they involve a lot of scenes, uh, a lot of cinematography, a lot of actors, a lot of background. And this short film was like that on steroids, like we're recreating emo shows from like the 2000s. So like we need a crowd of like 150 to 200 kids with colorful hair and tattoos and and like it's not that the show just has to happen we need to like direct it and have the scenes happen and we're making music for those scenes and stuff so it's a massive undertaking um i am putting in ten thousand dollars of my own money we're looking for investors and working with some some people but on kickstarter we're trying to raise thirty thousand dollars and i think currently we're at almost 20 right 
No, we're oh, wait, you're you're past that. So I always convert because it's Canadian. yeah. That's why. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't know what it is in U.S. In Canadian, you're almost there. <laughs> we're at twenty five thousand or like yeah. uh, getting closer to twenty six thousand. So uh, we're like really really close. We have nine days left. Um, so fingers crossed, we can make it. <laughs> well, I I mean you know obviously uh, growing up in that in that era. You know, that's what spoke to me a lot. I mean, we talked a little bit out off air, just talking about music in general and um, how that that that's a big part of uh, my childhood as well. Um, I, I didn't have any anyone else telling me to go that route, though. Um, but um, I, I like how cathartic this project seems it, it, to be for you. So, I mean, that that spoke to me. Um, and uh, that's I mean, besides that, I mean, I this is something that's right. Right. I don't know what just happened. My thing just flipped. Anyway. Um, I, I just, uh, I maximized my screen. Sorry. Yeah, that, that might've what happened. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, no, it's just something that uh, it definitely spoke to what we went through, right. <laughs> During this time period um, or well, a lot of people did. And so um, I echo those and I, I'm really excited for this project to, to get started. And uh, I, I, I hope everyone enjoys, uh, you know, that, uh, that trailer and, you know, uh, just talking about, you know, this, this project, because it's, it definitely looks like a lot of hard work and a lot of hearts put into it too. So, oh, thank you. yeah. So we have a mutual friend, Mitch, uh, who runs the terror table podcast. Um, I, I, one of the things I just recently heard from the recent episode that he was talking about with you, um, t promoting your project, but also talking about the film, the green room, uh, just green room. I don't know why I called it the green room. That sounds weird. It's like calling it the Google. I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm just an old parent, right? I don't know how to say it. Yeah. Um, one of the things he said um, was emo ladybird, which really caught my ear. And yeah. I, I, that's I, that's the, the general pitch is like, if we just needed to tell people in a very simple way is like, we're going for ladybird, but it's emo. Or ladybird, but there's like, they're going to shows with like screaming bands and stuff like that like metal and stuff but she would do the same thing i mean come on yeah. she would yeah sir sharona would definitely go to some emo shows she's gonna star in our movie <laughs> just hey, we just need help we need you need to, to donate yeah. we can get Sersha over here <laughs> yeah you know that from a little be, island <laughs> that'd be so awesome i'm a huge fan of her so that'd be very cool yeah uh, yeah, I, I am as well, but, um, I, I just have my, my YouTube channel. So maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I'm excited for this project and I, I hope the, the people who are watching this, um, you know, who normally aren't used to this kind of thing on my channel, but, uh, I, I hope that, you know, this speaks to them a little bit and, uh, they can check it out and, you know, decide whether or not they want to help out and hopefully this comes together. So, um, I'm excited for it. Yeah. No, I really appreciate that. Well, I mean, talking about Mitch and stuff, I, I know I brought him up uh, at Son of a Gun. I mean, he's cute, but it's whatever, you know. <laughs> um, but, Mitch, just kidding. Yeah, yeah he's beautiful. He's beautiful. Uh, and I, I will I will say there's, um, it's always interesting um, thinking about that platform, like podcasts and stuff. And then and there's so many different worlds that like are all connected and, and, and mm -hmm. so many different ways, which is what's cool about this space in particular uh, as well. Uh, I mean, uh, so that's, that's why I, I'm really happy to have you on here. So, um, yeah. Do you have anything uh, else you want to promote with uh, this project or anything you want to add to it before we jump into the film journey? Hmm, not really, unless you have like very specific questions about it. Like I gave the, the soft pitch and the Kickstarter. I think mm -hmm. that's like most of it. And let, like, if you were, you know, like a emo centric podcast, like, yeah, I could talk about music for, for a long time but yeah I, tell me tell me some of your favorite like tell me some of your favorite bands growing up and, and like some bands that you like now i suppose uh, sure. like there are some notes here <laughs> sure yeah like the band that got me like i've always been into rock music that's just kind of what our family grew up with and then my brother was like really trying to transition me into like metalcore and, and stuff and originally i thought it was really terrifying um <laughs> Yeah, the album he gave me, and he hated the band, but he gave me My Chemical Romance's uh, Three Cheers album. Mm -hmm. And that was the first album where it was just like, 
whoa, this is, there's something really different and special here. And that's when like slowly my hair started growing over my eye. Uh, <laughs> just by listening to it that one, just the one time, it just, just started. Just the one time, it just, yeah. just took over. Uh, and yeah, and then I just got into like heavier stuff or like more guitar centric stuff. Like I was super into like the fall of Troy, um, the used, uh, I'm trying to think of other bands. Um, did you ever, Prada, yeah, I was Prada. gonna say you're you're going the heavier because did you just get like heavier and heavier? That's kind of how I did it when I was younger. Yeah, and then I yeah I was like I got into like the death core for some of it, like even like Suicide Silence, White Chapel, um, All Shall Perish, stuff like that. And then I kind of like evened out. Like I still listen to a lot of like like post hardcore emo metal, but it's like it's a little bit of all of it, and probably less on the super heavy side like i really like um hot mulligan right now that's a band oh, yeah, I yeah. Love yeah. a lot i love stuff in that vein or the band pup is like my main like i could just listen to him every day um but yeah as for heavy like honestly spear fox is probably my favorite like heavier band right now and i'm lucky that i've gone to work with them five times and that they're friends of mine um but yeah, that's that's a little bit of it. But I like There's it's so, so weird when someone asks me about music. Oh, yeah, nothing blank. comes into my mind. You blank. I do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> so. but then my phone is just like banned out. Like I like so much. So right, right. Yeah, no, I definitely went similar routes. Where I, I mean, I listened to My Chemical Romance, of course, um, and mm -hmm. uh, some so like Fall Out Boy and a lot of you know those like green day actually i had a friend who just green day would just play in the uk and that he just he just told me like yeah i, was, I just went to a green day show i was like what he's like yeah they played all of dookie and i was like okay cool <laughs> damn um, yeah my, like my family was super into like uh older green day and we as a family i believe went to uh them on tour when they were doing american idiot and stuff yeah yeah that's that's what uh, i feel like that was the album that like really blew up which yeah, yeah. that was so, a crazy time for them oh yeah uh old george bush era <laughs> so yeah. yeah um but it's interesting like thinking you know how i went down similar paths where like i listened to devil wears prada and like that first bring me the horizon like i, mm -hmm. I want to say chelsea that, that that it was chelsea smile was that the second song or second album right second album yeah, yeah. and yeah. then i listened to um the one with the the aquarium on the front that's the one that like was the one i'm like i gotta have the heaviest stuff and that yeah their first yeah yeah that that album's unreal yeah and uh yeah then i went to born of osiris route and then and then i started going the cannibal corpse route so i went like oh yeah <laughs> i so went I, never went I don't i've never i i think i know one cannibal corpse song and it's the one in i think it's I think it's that song, but the one in Ace Ventura, mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. Hammer Smashed Face, I think, or something like that. That's it. Uh, that's all I know. That's all I know by Cannibal Corpse. That's, I feel like that's the gen the general public. I mean, it's always funny bringing that movie up because, or that band up in general, because uh, yeah. I always mention it's like, oh yeah, you've heard of them. I was like, really? I have. I was like, have you seen Ace Ventura? Like, <laughs> oh yeah. And I was like, do you remember the scene where he's getting chased and <laughs> he jumps <laughs> and it starts becoming a band member? <laughs> like yeah. that's them i mean different different singer um but yeah it's always it's always funny to talk music and now here i am like i mean like converge is still one of my favorite bands of all time and um yeah so going to shows still love it um yeah. but i'm getting old i like to sit in the back uh yeah <laughs> like my back give my back a rest <laughs> so. for sure yeah. yeah it's weird how how it changes like i used to the oh I didn't even mention like my favorite band at the time was uh, Dead and Divine. And the singer of Dead and Divine designed our movie poster, which was crazy. Very surreal uh, experience because I, I reached out on a whim and he happened to be a big Spirit Box fan. And so in turn, he was a fan of my music videos. So he was like, hell yeah, let's do this. So, um, but what were you, what did you just say that clicked something in my brain? Sitting oh. back, being old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was like, yeah. I was definitely the person to, like, just go, like, too wild in, in crowds and stuff. And, like, I remember this one show I was at, um, I was, like, 16 or maybe not even, like, 14. 
and uh, I was in a mosh pit and this girl had never been in a mosh pit. She turned to her boyfriend because I was pushing people around and she didn't know what was going on. And her boyfriend, who was like mid twenties or whatever, grabbed my shoulder and punched me in the face in the mosh pit. And I like blacked out and I was spitting blood into a, a little paper cup because my friends were helping me. And uh, now it was like me, like I've, I haven't been in a mosh pit for a little bit, but I don't know. I feel like I can still do it a little bit. Yeah. Probably run out of breath. Um, but uh, that that uh, that show moment encapsulates what I want to capture in my movie. You want to you want to spit blood in the paper cup? That's that's what, yeah, that's what we're doing. That's the movie. That's emo ladybird. Emo ladybird. I I love it. Um. Well, I mean, I I hope uh, I hope people stuck around for the the music talk and uh. But okay. like that. This is yeah. I'm, something I, I love always talking about that just never comes up, which is just a, a lot of fun. But. You know, mm-hmm. it goes back to that, you know, to Lady Bird, right? It goes back to movies, right? Um, so you ready to do this film journey? Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think well, so. I, I think so. Nice. Uh, so the first question I usually ask people um, is, what is your earliest memory with film? Ooh. See, I should have, I should have like studied your questions. <laughs> My earliest memory. It's so weird because like, I wasn't a film guy growing up. Like I, I didn't grow, like as like a casual movie watcher and watch animated films and whatever. I used to want to be an animator before I wanted to be a filmmaker. Uh, but it was um, my dad actually got like a camcorder for um, like home movies mm-hmm. and Christmas that we never used for that like once. And then once he got it, it was just like just what I did and I captured things and we had a project in school and I would make a video for it and and whatever. And so that was like, I got into making video more than I got into watching like cinema. And then like probably, and this is like, I feel embarrassed every time I tell someone this movie because I don't know, the the general response isn't uh, the same as mine, but uh, Tim Burns' Edward Scissorhands was like the first movie that I watched that I like, realized that there was like a specific person behind like only one person could have made that movie and it felt like kind of handmade and that started my like love for film but it wasn't like oh I grew up with like black and white films or my dad was a cinephile like I I don't have that journey unfortunately um most of my journey was like I used to make stop motion videos on YouTube like very terrible ones that's a lot of work though uh, (laughs) yeah that's a lot that was was my obsession and then like getting into tim burton i was like oh man like i want to make stop motion movies and that was like my path until a grade eight video project that we had to do about like bullying and then me and my friends took it way too seriously and uh, we took like the tv dolly in school to use as our camera dolly we spent multiple days we were cutting class and like getting other classes to be extras and stuff um there was one scene where we had to beat up my friend in the scene because it was about bullying and our principal walked by and was like, that's not how you beat someone up. And he was teaching us how to like beat them up better. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, oh, I never, I've never heard that. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's like, that seems, that seems like straight from a movie. It's like, that's not how you do that. Yeah. Who's your principal? He sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. He, he was a great guy. Um, and that is, yeah, that like, once we made that project, it was just like, oh, all I want to do is make video. And I don't know if it was because like, oh, this is way easier than stop motion. Or if it was the fact that stop motion is very lonely. It was me in my bedroom for like, you know, oh, I'll do a four hour session or an eight hour session moving, uh, pennies. Cause I made a uh, stop motion out of money when I was in grade seven or eight. Um, and then maybe film, it was like oh, I'm like making something with others and it felt communal and um, yeah, just collaborative and involved. Like they're, it's not just my ideas. It's yeah. us balancing ideas and making like the best idea wins and stuff. And and then that's just been my journey since then. And even still, I didn't think of it as a career. I would start filming my brother's bands at shows um, then other bands started to notice and like started asking me to film them. I started filming metal festivals that were happening in town and meeting bands from out of, 
out of province, which is actually how I built my relationship with the people in Spirit Box was from way back then. And uh, then my teacher noticed that I was kind of excelling in video and animation, whatever. And he was the one who was like, you should pursue this, like this could be your career, which I never even fathomed that mm -hmm. that was uh, something people did. And, uh, and then I went to film school in Vancouver and that's been like my filmmaking journey. And I don't know if that's like what your question uh, was asking. Cause I know it's more about like watching movies. I assume. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, but, but it was film school that kind of opened me up to cinema where, cause I, I came there as like the opposite of most film students. I just filmed everything and I had, a demo reel already and just stuff I made. I had made music videos and then all my peers hadn't touched a camera, mm -hmm. but they knew like Tarantino and David Lynch and like Cronenberg and like would tell me about all these directors. And I'm like, I have not seen a Tarantino movie. I knew so little. But, I, but I've spit blood in a cup. So does that count? Yeah. I lived a Tarantino movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that was a very interesting experience. And I felt so like ignorant and kind of dumb uh, going to film school and not knowing like cinema. And I still like, I love movies, but I don't consider myself like some intense cinephile. Like most of my film love, I will say is probably like the nineties on to like, I'm more of a modern, like I have a hard time with black and white films still. Uh, I have appreciation for some movies from like the seventies and whatever, it, but it's like, it's more like the, the right movie that hit me like a Goodfellas taxi driver or whatever. Like I love those right. films, but, yeah. but it's not like I've just seen everything from those eras and stuff. You're expected to come on. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. But I see right beside you or behind you, the before trilogy. That's yeah, I have one of my that's like my favorite oh yeah. My yeah. uh my favorite trilogy. Mm -hmm. That and Toy Story, I'd say. Those are I mean I mean it's my second favorite. I mean the first is right here. But mm -hmm. you know, I mean it's hard to beat those, but on a very different level though. You know, the before yeah, trilogy sure. is an incredible I, I yeah, I I'm glad you I'm glad you've seen those because those are those are next yeah. those are the best romantic films of all time. I, mean, I agree yeah, yeah that like i love those movies so much and like i could watch those over the, the lord of the rings i'm not an action guy um i like i don't know like i and i like the lord, lord of the rings but most action movies put me to sleep and but then the before trilogy feels like gripping action yeah you're just like, glued to like whatever they're saying whatever's around them yeah just that i can't remember which one it is but there's a scene where they're just like in the record store First. listening to music yeah. and the the they're speaking with their eyes yeah it's that's so... one of my favorite scenes of all time like it just ugh. it's that's, yeah there's the i mean there is no words to describe that right because it's such it's a butterflies <laughs> yeah, yeah it's 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 amazing so now i'm gonna i'm just gonna gush over it because obviously i have it behind me on my <laughs> Like I yeah, have, I'm like the more I look, the more I'm seeing it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's it's everywhere for me. Uh, I I love those movies. Um, man, that's uh that's awesome. So so Edward Scissorhands. So I guess you went the like the the visual route a little bit more so, mm -hmm. right? Because like you were saying, you went to film school, uh, kind of being the the one on the outside a little bit. Where like I hadn't seen all these films. I've just done a lot of you know uh, like filming of different projects that you were a part of yeah. and filming your brother's band and just doing all these, I mean, you were just in, in the, you were just practicing almost like, it's not even just practicing, but like you were, you were engaging with the medium in a different way. Right. I've just always loved creating. <laughs> like I didn't realize that I was a filmmaker until like, Oh, I'm in film school now. You oh. know what I mean? Like it wasn't yeah. like, it, it was such a weird path, I guess for me. Cause it was like, ever since I was a kid, I was just on like one creative passion to the next like i used to want to be a writer and then i got super into Yu-Gi-Oh cards and so i started was, making okay. <laughs> my own trading cards nice and selling them to kids at, in school and then we found a program called rpg maker on the computer i remember that <laughs> i started making rpg games and, and we had a 
a forum based on that RPG maker that we were building a community online on our, we had a website called Dark Stars RPG and then stop motion. Like, it's just been like my whole life of just like creating. And I think why film made so much sense was I've always been into story and characters and world building and visual, like any visual medium that it was just like, well, here's the one that puts it all together and music. Even though I'm not a musician, I've always been so fascinated I've, yeah. Music. yeah i'm also not a musician so i've just been in proximity of it working at a record store just always had i've always had the exploratory kind of like mm-hmm. i just i love learning new things uh totally. and hearing different things that um kind of just interest me so although i have not made as much projects though that's the one thing that i I, I fall a little bit short on, um, you know, but I mean, something like this, my channel right here is, is a creative endeavor that I, I quite enjoy. So Absolutely. yeah, everyone's got their own different little things, but um, it's interesting hearing, uh, you know, that process of, like I said, it, just kind of coming to it organically, you know, I, I think uh, that, I mean, that, I, I feel like you're, I don't know, I wasn't there, but I feel like uh, other people who were in school with you were maybe a little bit jealous of <laughs> that organic kind of, I don't know, um, what, I, you know, well, maybe then you're just like, well, I don't know, the, you know, these filmmakers, but like, uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so yeah, tell me, tell me more about like film school. How, how, how did that go? You know, like, what did you focus on? Is there anything that was like any aha moments that came to you? So film film school was when I like started to appreciate filmmaking uh for sure because that was when I was like okay well I'm gonna watch like a movie every day and like my first process was trying to and I never finished but trying to watch every movie on the IMDB top top 250 maybe oh 250 okay yeah I think it was just the 250 (laughs) not a thousand that's not like a psycho like me (laughs) (laughs) I, I'm not, I, I'm a small doses guy. Well, that's not even true. Like I'm a very, I have a very obsessive personality. So I don't know why I haven't watched like a billion movies. I think on IMDb now I've rated like 1500 movies or something. Yeah. But I definitely have not watched like the top a thousand or anything. Um, But I, I got through half of the list, but the, the other hard part, about that list is it's always changing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was like, by the time I watched half of them, well, 20 of them had changed or 30 of mm-hmm. them or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and I started realizing like technique. Like I didn't realize that where you place the camera is to change what the film is saying about a character, like, like the angle, the lens choice. Or it was so weird. Like I... I knew lighting made things look cool, (laughs) but like it wasn't until film school that lighting started to like really move me. I remember being in film school and I, I was on a big, uh, Scorsese, uh, Scorsese kick and Hugo came out and Hugo is just like this love letter to old cinema that I was so ignorant to, but the way Hugo made me feel and like the lighting I remember it was the first movie that I watched and just cried because I was like, this is just so beautiful. Like visually, like it just uh, took me over. And that's when I started getting, that's when I started becoming cool. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but that. Hugo. Hugo was it. Write that down, everyone. Hugo is the one that got you cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, I really like that movie, but it was like when I started really noticing how intricate it, filmmaking is from every different filmmaker um so scorsese was like it's funny tarantino was one of the first ones that i watched from film school but i did not get him like i watched pulp fiction and i was like this is the best movie of all time like because that's how a lot of people perceive it yeah yeah you have to watch this movie like it's the best thing you'll ever see and i was like yeah (laughs) i think think it's like the best thing you've ever seen if you're like in your late teens early 20s like that that's i feel like that's the that's the starter i mean the i mean obviously i I like tarantino a lot but Mm -hmm. um that i've grown to him now yeah but that's the starter for a lot of people to be honest so i mean it makes sense that people like yeah pulp fiction is the best movie of all time or something like that so yeah i remember like that one specifically it was just like that was the movie um for like a movie you you can't miss that had come out 
And then I think Drive came out when we were in film school, and that was like the thing that everyone was like, we have to make something like Drive. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. It, like I, I should just be like looking behind you right now, and I'll just mention all those movies. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Scorsese. Like I watched a lot of his films. So like I said, like Goodfellas, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, um, and some of the newer stuff. Um, who else? I know who I really love right now, but I'm trying to think of things in film school that were some of those like first finds did you ever um go the route of like any international pictures or anything like that did you ever like subtitle the subtitles were yeah i i love i honestly not that i've watched like every foreign <laughs> film but uh i honestly a lot of times appreciate that more and i'm more of a indie film guy than like a blockbuster guy or i don't know like like even just talking about ladybird i would much rather watch ladybird than Pulp Fiction, honestly, like it's it's more it's enjoyable. Just, I I get that. <laughs> so. Yeah, it just like warms my heart, and it's just that's when pe characters feel so real is in that kind of, or like the Before trilogy. Like that's a perfect example. That is like top tier movie stuff for me. Um, foreign films. I'm trying to think. I remember a big one for me was the Diving Bell and the butterfly i think that's Ooh. what it's called yeah 2000s movie right i think it came out either late 90s or early 2000s oh. yeah yeah um and just like the well what the movie's about is amazing but it's also like the filmmaking because he's a guy who can only communicate by blinking because he's fully paralyzed and stuff i haven't seen it for a very long time so hopefully I'm not <laughs> you know. uh and like they shoot the film through his eyelid and I remember there being this scene where they're sewing his eyes shut. And yeah, it's, I think that's what happens. It's been a very long time, but that movie blew me away. Um, i trying to think of, I remember a significant moment watching Amelie. Oh yeah. Love that movie. That's so, yeah. that's such a great score too. Uh, yeah. And I always listen to all the time. Oh, that brings me to, it's not, well, I believe he's a French filmmaker, but this isn't foreign cinema necessarily. But uh, Eternal Sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was a significant movie for me in film school. Because once again, it was a filmmaker where I was like, wow, this is so like, could only be made by him. And he has this, and I think it's because I come from like wanting to do stop motion and stuff, but, and even music videos. He's a music video director. Yeah. He has this handcrafted feel even in a movie like eternal sunshine i just watched it again and i don't know if you've seen my spirit box or my spirit box music video constants i have and it's, it's it, i can see the remnant i can see where you're going now yeah you're going. and I, I didn't even realize i was like wow i'm so influenced by this movie <laughs> yeah. i had no no idea but like i love his work i love um uh spike jones uh oh aronofsky Oh yeah, I love I yeah, that's some that's a name that doesn't come up enough in this community, oddly enough. Interesting. Yeah, I I uh hadn't even heard of Requiem for a Dream. And what a good time. That see uh, like I would time. rather watch something like that than like the Lord of the Rings. I know that's like it's super dark and like it's not a movie you watch over and over again, but like I really love seeing all the people addicted to so many different things. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> just but it, it's just like, and I know, like, it's it's on the verge of just being a really good PSA, but wow, uh, that movie has a lot of style and was just so impactful. I love movies. I kind of like watching movies that make you feel shitty and, like, that you're, like, sitting like this and mm -hmm. like it just makes your skin crawl because you're just like wow this guy's in you. control of my emotions and he's making me feel stuff um and then like yeah mo i love most of his work uh the wrestler i think is uh, yeah thing. that's i mean i used to i watched wrestling growing up so that speaks to me a lot and so. i didn't i know nothing about the wrestler and i love that movie so much um and the that's what i think is so what i love most about cinema now 
is cinema makes me appreciate things that I don't care a damn about. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, uh, there's a movie uh, by, I think it's Ron Howard called Rush. Yeah. I was, I was literally going to go the route of like race car driving. That's, that's literally, yeah. that's what I do know. not care about any of that. Neither do I. I adore <laughs> that movie. And it is like one of the greatest rivalries I've seen in a movie. And I was just, like, oh man. I think that was 2013 or something. So that was like when I was just getting obsessed with kind of everything. And like since film school, it was definitely like, oh, I want to be in the know about all the movies now, but I still haven't done all the homework going backwards. So I'm like, sure. since film school, I've been pretty good and keeping up with it and, and whatever. But uh, yeah, it's black and white films are very hard for me. I've seen a few. <laughs> fell asleep a lot in, in certain ones, which I feel that's is fair. Just, it's it's just, just a crime. It's well, it's, it's interesting too. I mean, like all, a lot, obviously it was like a different time and a different culture. So, I mean, with what we're all interested in just collectively, it, it yeah. makes sense that like, this is a niche thing now to like black and white sure. film, because I mean, that's not the culture we're in anymore, you know? So yeah. um, it takes a special like pa- level of patience. Cause I feel like all of us have lost that <laughs> ability a little bit more Yeah, with, with social media, but. Yeah. And it, it's kind of weird. Cause like, and I know this isn't um, adjacent to what we're talking about right now, but like, I love certain slow movies, but it just mm-hmm. depends. Like, um the movie a ghost story oh my god don't even that is i don't know if you like okay that is like one of my favorite modern movies um and it was a movie that i was so nervous about watching because i am really weird when it comes to like mortality and stuff like i'll have panic attacks if i start talking about that kind of stuff so i put it off for like a year i was like this trailer's beautiful but i don't know if i'll be able to handle this and then I watched it and it was very existential, but wow, just like breathtaking. And it just like, it captured some of my scary feelings, but made me almost feel like at peace with them. I don't even know how to explain it, but I just like, I adored that movie. And I would say that's a pretty like low key, slower movie. So like, yeah, I'm just yeah. kind of all over the place. Like I, I kind of like a little bit of everything, but not everything works for me or, or whatever. Well, that's totally fair. I mean, that movie I can't talk about without start crying because I, I, yeah, I have an association. I mean, I talked about a record store earlier. I that came out right when the week after I got the news that the, my record store was closing, and I had spent so much time there. So that movie is all about space, <laughs> and I'm just like it just like waved over me. So I've only, I mean, I have the poster over there, but I've only seen it once. I think maybe me too, and but I it's can't watch it again, <laughs> like in, for a left- while. Yeah, it's left such an impact. Like, I would love to make a movie like that. I actually, do you have a second? I got this t-shirt, which is a good <laughs> conversation piece. Of it. Yeah. There's this band I really like. Um, and there's no way it wasn't influenced by this movie. But they released a song called Phantom. And it has this little cute ghost on it that totally uh, looks like exactly it. like mm-hmm. the ghost in that uh, that movie. Which I just love... I love when like childhood or like whimsical ideas are taken very like seriously. Yeah. Cause that's like Scooby-Doo Beetlejuice. Like that's, that's what you yeah. think of when you see a ghost in a bed sheet, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like it was like Charlie Brown. Oh yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I love that. I love, and I've talked to Mitch about this. Like I like some horror, but I don't like all. Um, Were you able to check out Hereditary? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love Hereditary. Like, that's my kind of horror movie. Same with Midsommar. Like, I love... There it um, is. There. Nice. Nice. We, in uh, our One Spirit Box video, we have, like, a, a Hereditary reference a little bit in there. Because <laughs> the the one guy's all, like, gassed up or whatever. Um, what else? What else from that time? film school oh david fincher was a huge one for me Mm -hmm. um i don't even know oh yeah i had seen the social network in high school and this was before i was uh i don't don't like calling it like i'm not a cinephile but i kind of am depends because i'm i'm passionate like a filmmaker but like i don't know all the history and everything Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I don't consider myself a cinephile because there's some friends I have that I talk about cinema to and they're like, I don't know French New Wave and stuff like that. Um, but with David Fincher, when I watched The Social Network, I like was very reluctant because I heard about this Facebook movie and I was like, oh my God, like what a cash grab. Like I didn't mm -hmm. know who Fincher was or, or what. And I watched it and I was like, I don't know why that was good. And then after I went to film school, I got super into Fincher and then I was like rewatching the social mm -hmm. network. And I was like, man, this is some, a movie about stuff that should be kind of boring. And it feels like an action movie, like the way it's directed, the way it's cut, the, I don't know, like, I don't love every Fincher movie, almost, but uh, I don't know, he's something special. He's a, a huge inspiration to me. He was a huge, huge filmmaker for me. Uh, sorry, it took me a while to, to get to all those things from film school that I was like, yes, this is what I like, really discovered in film school, I'd say. Well, I mean, that's the thing is like, it's a fire hydrant. That's, I mean, that, that kind of describes all of what just happened where it's like, we just gushed about all these different things left and right. I mean, yeah, that's what happens when you start talking about the things that you really like, or, I mean, even like going to film school in general and being the one who's like, I don't really know much is like, where do I begin? And that that's where it all just starts going different directions. Right. For uh, sure. And you, you mentioned, um, you, and passing, but you said, it's like, it's like, I know what I like now. So like, what are some, like, uh, what are some things that you've liked recently? Or, or like, I know you talked about Green Room, um, mm -hmm. you know, with Mitch. Uh, is that one of your favorite films? I'd say so, yeah. And I think it's because I grew up as like an emo kid or whatever, but like anything that touches on how alternative people or music actually feels like authentically, um, really like piques my interest like that in lords of chaos it's just like oh this is this is sick i love nice you've got it all i also have this on blu-ray nice i also i just watched heavy trip i don't know if you've heard of it no. uh, it's a finnish uh metal band that are the metal band uh, well no they're the actually the metal band is called um what was it called <laughs> it was um um was it um shoot now I'm like blanking on it. Uh, like okay. it was like pierced rectum or something like that. Is like, okay. like why did you? It's like really brutal, but it's also really funny. It's a Finnish band. Uh, it's a Finnish movie that came out a couple of years ago in twenty either eighteen or twenty nineteen. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But if you can, okay. heavy trip is what it's called. So yeah, I haven't even heard of that. I've seen like, hmm. um, like Sound of Metal, which I really yeah. really like, and uh, there's a foreign movie. I think it's called think it's called metalhead and it's like this person with like corpse paint like black metal I can't even fully remember the story but i remember that movie being pretty good my biggest inspiration Ooh, here's another man i'm sorry this is gonna be like the least linear i love it. this is how i this is how my brain works so this this works me for me. too i'm uh if you look at my computer i'm like a a hundred tab open kind of guy and that's how my brain works unfortunately <laughs> like, oh yeah oh yeah i thought of this yeah, yeah i gotta answer that oh, okay i gotta go back to that later i will do that <laughs> yeah i'll i'll be in a conversation with my wife and i'll like respond to something we were talking about two hours ago but without being like oh when we were talking about this like i'll just answer and sort of like what like <laughs> But it's just like, oh, I'm still in that conversation. I just put it on pause. <laughs> uh, oh, what was I? Oh, one of the things I really explored in film school, and I'm not like a huge anime guy, but uh, my my roommate showed me uh, Studio Ghibli mm -hmm. and Miyazaki films and stuff. So like Totoro, Howl's Moving Castle. And like there was something about how he portrayed like the mundane like oh he's gonna take the time to film a kid tying their shoe wrong and like getting it right and like those moments felt really significant to me and like how I approach filmmaking in a little way like um my one client <laughs> described it as like oh you you like you make important like the boring stuff mm -hmm. sometimes but they really appreciated that about some of my work which I'm like should I be offended I don't know but uh <laughs> It's boring, but we like it. <laughs> yeah, and that, like, that I loved. Same with, like, a, like I love 
uh, link later. Well, we talked about the trilogy, but like Boyhood 2 was like, I know that wasn't, it was a bit after film school, but like, holy man, that just felt like watching myself grow up. Mm -hmm. Like the kid, he was wearing some clothes that I was wearing at that time, certain like when they had the soldier boy moment and stuff, it was just like, man, like it was just like time capsule of my youth. It was crazy. And he even had almost an emo face and stuff too. Like his hair get, got long and yeah, he was wearing the same like uh, American apparel, like track jacket thing. Track suit. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, all, we all, for some reason, we're all Brits back in, back in the, in the, in the mid 2000s. Like a guy, a guy Ritchie and, and emo came together and, and gave I don't know how. Yeah, but, yeah, it, but it really did. <laughs> I remember bad. like sometimes I was wearing it, it was so weird. I'd have long hair, but I would be in like a green polo shirt and I'm like, why was that what I made sense of <laughs> myself? I don't know. Uh but anyways, <laughs> filmmakers now. My biggest inspiration is uh D- Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, incredible uh, filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and some of my favorite movies are Arrival and Prisoners. Um, those are like, to me, like perfect tens. Um, I love the first five minutes of Arrival makes me cry every time. Um, just like, I don't know, to me, that's like good filmmaking. Like, just like, if you get me invested with so little, yeah, it's just, and like, I like Blade Runner. I like Dune. Like, those are great movies too, but like different properties, not his per se yeah i i honestly like i still like those movies but i love stuff that feels more singular and small and personal um i'd rather watch like you know i'll i'll watch like avenger movies and stuff but like i really think um movies that have small stakes but to the characters it feels like the world is ending is way cooler than a movie about like actually saving the world from like annihilation from like a swarm or something, you know? Yeah. Or a, a horde of robots or aliens or I don't know. Like that's the stuff that gets my heart kind of racing. But uh, yeah, Denny was a, a huge one. And like, I love Incendie and uh, Polytechnic and, and stuff like that. Like I love those kind of movies. Um, I've still not seen his early work, by the way. No. No, I know. I I haven't seen. I I think um, Incendies was the 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 oldest film I've seen from him, which is also a very underrated film. But like, wow, what a movie! Yeah, that's one of my that's one of my favorite. Like, it would probably be well, Arrival and Prisoners would probably be tie. I can't make my mind out of those two. Prisoners then, is probably my favorite of his. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love thriller movies, and it's just like it almost it's so he's this interesting filmmaker that I feel like he has some like David Fincher in him. He Mm -hmm. has Christopher Nolan in him a little bit, but I feel like he does emotion much better. Yeah. He does what Christopher Nolan should do. You know what I mean? Like I watched interstellar and I was like, dang, like you really, I don't know if you love interstellar. I do love interstellar. It's like my favorite Nolan movie. So keep going. (laughs) Keep going. Redacted. It's the best movie ever. But I remember I remember watching that movie and being like, I was so excited for it. And I love all this stuff on Earth. And visually, there's a lot of really cool stuff in space and stuff. But like, I feel like emotionally, and maybe I'm misremembering, but like, when he goes back to finally see his daughter, mm-hmm. and then like, she's dying, and she's like, oh, go see Anne Hathaway. And he's like, okay, peace out. I was like, what are you doing? Like, it's just like, I don't know. There's something about some of his like character choices and emotional choices that I was like, man, you just totally missed the bar- mark. And like, yeah, like, it's like a robot directed it sometimes <laughs> where when I watch Arrival, it was like, oh, I'm getting what I should have got emotionally and in interstellar after like a two and a half hour journey in the first five minutes. Like it just, that's why like to me, and I know not everyone loves uh, Denny's work and stuff, but like everything he does, like has really landed for me. He has this perfect amount of like entertainment for me. Like the he's he's, and maybe this is where I consider like where I hope my career can be. But like I feel like he has an indie filmmaker in him. 
he mm-hmm. also has the popcorn filmmaker in him and like he just meshes them so well where like i think that's what nolan wants to be but i just i don't know it the further nolan gets in his career the more i'm just like oh like i just I don't like I I love Memento. I love the Prestige. Yeah. Um I don't know, he's kind of falling off. your favorite, but and, you know, it could go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so it has a lot of like Yeah. Interstellar should have been like my favorite movie of all time. And I think like hype also dictates certain things. Like I was sure. so excited. I feel so bad to like talk poorly of a movie. Like Oh no, it, I I get it though. I get what you're saying. I think I think the interesting thing too is like Knowing Denis' background, because I know he was a documentarian before he went into feature filmmaking, um, yeah. and thinking about like Christopher Nolan, I feel like he went really like the the student film route. Like he went like I I watched all these films. I watched Brisson and the French New Wave, and I think that's the route like he went. Whereas you can tell like that's why he's doing these kind of more heady things, but kind of missing the emotional side. Whereas like you know, the documentarian side was like, well, that's all about the humanity or, you know, um, you know, some, some kind of uh, subject that is dealing with like, how do, how do we, how are we affected by watching this? Right. So I feel like he translates that to that blockbuster mentality that he's went to now. And, you know, that's why I think his movies land much better. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a great, kind of description and probably like that's what I lean toward like I love cinema and like thinking about like the imagery and how it moves me and and I love Nolan like don't get me wrong I yeah. still think Interstellar is a great movie I just think he's fallen off from like me being like I used to be like he's the greatest filmmaker of all time you know what I mean yeah, yeah. uh and uh and Denny oh. kind of filled that spot where I was like super obsessed with Nolan I was just like oh Denny just feels kind of like he's doing they have very similar career paths to me of yeah. like the popcorn and the artist, the popcorn film and the artist film kind of combined. And to me, just like I, the final execution lately has just been more consistent through uh, Denny. Um, but oh, uh, Canadian, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Love, love Canadians. Uh, no, that is kind of a weird, like it just happens to be, I'm not someone who's like, He's better because he's Canadian. <laughs> I just, uh, I think, I'm trying to think of uh, which was my first movie from him. I don't know if I saw Prisoners first and then worked my way backwards. I think that was my first. Uh, yeah. Because, I, I mean, that's, I mean, that was more of the exposure from, like, the international kind of side. I feel like that was, like, his first big hit, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That was his first, like, Hollywood movie. Yeah. Um, Which is why I'm, like, I think I was... I think I had watched Incendie and actually Enemy. Yeah, I saw Enemy in theaters, so that would make... Oh, no. I think they released Enemy after, but he shot it first. Yeah. Uh, I'm mixed up, but uh, I love all of them. Yeah. It it doesn't matter. Uh, Interstellar, best movie. Arrival, second best movie. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, Both, well, both have something to do with space, you know, and that's, that's what we're getting at. So. I will say, like, Interstellar is the more cool, ambitious, like, swing for the fences project. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many things that are just, like, innovative and just, like, wow. Like, so it's just awesome that he has the confidence to be so bold, Nolan. I just, yeah, it was like that if he could just connect that emotion, that emotional side for me, um, I feel like that's the only part that's kind of lacking for me now. Yeah, that's and that's fair. I mean, I I think where I think in that particular film, I think the score is the emotional piece, and I think Hans Zimmer. I mean, that's that's that that I think that's the reason I love it so much is because of that Hans Zimmer score. I think that actually is the heart of the movie. Uh, I don't think it's the visual side of it. I think it's more of you know where where that score is coming from um that is fair it's so that's probably where i that's where my mind goes to when i'm like why i like it so much is because of that but yeah um well this leads me to a question that like since you you mentioned them uh if you could be in any one director's films like any director if i could be one in one in one yeah would you be an extra? Would you be, you know, the main star? Who who would you who would you choose if you chose a director you'd want to be in? 
I a director I'd want to be in. Uh, uh oh, <laughs> uh, cut that, cut that, cut that. Um, uh, in their films, yeah. Uh, sorry, I had to. Uh, good family. Well, I'm not. I'm not an actor. Um, like yeah, pro- like uh, honestly, he's my filmmaking hero. So I'd probably just pick uh, Villeneuve. And like also, he does a lot of his stuff with Deacons, who is also another hero of mine um because you and that's also probably another even though all of christopher nolan movies look great but that's the other part of denny's films where it's just like oh this is also how i love movies to like look and feel Mm -hmm. um i i just read an article about in prisoners they spent so much time trying to get this shot of a tree right and as soon as i saw the article come up I was like, I know what shot they're talking about because there's just this random shot that is like this tree in front of the house or or whatever. And you're just like, oh, why is that there? And it's like, man, it's because they care about details like that, that most people won't even register. There you go. Like what? Um, That's like, ah, that's the stuff I really like. Um, Sorry. Was there a question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. Probably his films. Would I be an extra probably so i like he wouldn't give me the chance to be the lead because he he knows i don't have it but uh probably my answer a spielberg movie seems like it would also be like a blast to be on set for so i'd be like another like i love jurassic park and yeah um et is one of my favorite movies um yeah those would be my two my two that's probably Bill Bill Nuve. Yeah. I mean, those are good choices. Um, I mean, I, I'm much like you, I'm, I'm no actor. So even though my name is Nathan Jones, which is, there is an Australian actor who that is uh, a good name. Yeah. Mine is not a good name. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool though. I mean, uh, the thing is I always like, I was at the, growing up, I'm like Jones, like everyone has that name. Like why nobody, nobody cares about that. Um, until I found when I watched the movie, Troy, and I found out that the the first guy that Achilles kills, Brad Pitt kills, is Nathan Jones. And mm. I'm always like, maybe one day I can be like him. And now I'm bald and he's bald too. So like I just shaved my head. So maybe one day. <laughs> right. Maybe you're already there. Maybe I just gotta be Australian and then I also gotta be like two hundred more pounds, like an of muscle. So but right. maybe a boy can dream. <laughs> yeah, boy can dream. Boy yeah. can dream. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. But um, if, okay, I think I can answer this um, just based on kind of like what you're doing right now with your project. But um, I always like to ask a question and this one does require some thought, but this, because you're kind of doing this a little bit, this might come up naturally. But if your life was a movie, what would your title, what would that title be? What would you call it? Yeah, probably what I'm making right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Because it is a... Uh, collection of who I am and and my teenage years so I feel like that's the best answer I would have right now is our last day as kids and I think it is like I do hold on to like my youth like those years that yeah and I think a lot of people do but it's like oh man those were those were the days and like I was finding myself and that feels so special even like even the heartbreak seems obviously very dumb in hindsight but also like you learned a lot from it you learned a lot it's like beautiful that like you felt those things even though some of those things were shitty you know yeah 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 i also i'm noticing paddington above your head it's right there yes i i am a big paddington fan i'm i'm taking him with me to the uk so (laughs) nice paddington like just in general or just the movies um the the movies i mean i grew up a little bit with it but i was more of a winnie the pooh like that's what i was exposed to growing up but of course i mean i was coat i think corduroy bear like you know i was him and 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 paddington was there too so but it wasn't it wasn't until the movies that i'm like oh yeah paddington and then i watched it and i was like these movies are just so good like so wholesome yeah so like nearly perfect movies they are and it's Paddington. Like, you just would never, like, yeah, I, I love those movies. They're yeah. great. It's, it's in my, um, I think, I, I made, like, a, a top 100 list 
it just I was dared to do it and it took me like hours but <laughs> um I put Paddington um near like I, I want to say it was like right outside the top 10 Paddington 2 because I love that mm-hmm. movie so much is like there's no yeah. way this movie is not in here and I got a lot of like people like really Paddington is like have you seen it and they're like no I'm like well go watch the movie it's that's why it's so good yeah it just makes you feel awesome yeah so, yeah and and like I'm a pretty like moody most of the things I make are like very depressing and stuff and like things I gravitate towards are depressing uh, music and film but like if you can make a movie that is just like actual joy and it like doesn't suck <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that it's just like that is uh what it is, or I don't know. That that movie was like actually like pretty profound. That and uh there was the Mr. Rogers documentary. Oh my that came god. Out. Yeah, that I, that movie I was crying like every other scene. <laughs> I saw it in I saw it in a small theater and <clears throat> it made me want to be a better person. You <clears throat> know, like I watched it and I was just like, wow, I wanna be that for people. And like, I know I'm not, but like if you watch something that is that good that it makes you want to be a better person and it was entertaining and whatever, like, especially as someone that is more moody, cynical about the world. Empathetic. I mean, well, the, I mean, that's our, like our backgrounds or like the music where like, it's like, yeah, we're, we're moody. We like the things that we don't, we don't, we like to feel the things, but also be like a little bit curmudgeon about it. Right. Yeah. But it's sure. interesting to see the, the opposite of that and the, and like as as we're adults now we're like okay maybe it wasn't as bad as <laughs> yeah. Yeah. maybe joy if it does feel nice <laughs> packaged in the right way um so yeah marmalade sandwich just in a little marmalade sandwich <laughs> yeah yeah um kind of <clears throat> i mean I, I i could do this all night i i, I love this um but i would like to ask kind of like uh, collectively how you know your your process as a filmmaker yourself and and obviously what you've been exposed to and what you're still you know exposing yourself to um how has this medium in general of film changed your worldview or your outlook on life yeah i think and that kind of goes back to what we were talking before is uh film opens me up to things i'm not interested in or people i wouldn't and i consider myself like an empathetic person but like if forces you to really like sit with the person where it's like oh we would have totally different viewpoints or you're not a person i would expose myself to um not in that way uh, dang. <laughs> I get a little <laughs> yeah, you got me <laughs> yeah I got uh, <laughs> his, his, good luck with your campaign well it's this <laughs> oh no um dang uh you yeah i derailed it <laughs> watch my words oh uh, that's really good um yeah just like it forces you to really like live in other people's shoes like that's like my favorite part about cinema is like i'm a different person when i walk like because of film and i have i'm interested in things that like the characters of a race car movie that I would have not cared about, but then I'm telling people like, Oh man, the rivalry in this film is just like, I can't believe this is, you know, based on a a true story or whatever. And like, I don't know. It just, yeah. It makes you want to learn more about things that you wouldn't have interest in, or it makes you um, feel connected to like when I watch green room and I see that someone captured how I felt going to shows. Ignore all like the Nazi horror stuff. Exactly. Yeah, I was gonna be like, like, eh, ignore that. <laughs> Wasn't around <laughs> that either. <laughs> so. Yeah. When when I talk about Green Room, uh, especially as being like an influence for my film, it's the first like ten to fifteen minutes of just like dumb punk teens who like they like music. They don't make the best choices. Um, they make choices that hurt themselves, and uh, but they're just having a good time and like they're like living in that moment you know like there's these scenes in green room where like it's slow motion in a mosh pit and you just like wow that is what it feels like being in there but to an outside viewer who doesn't get a mosh pit it looks like chaos Mm -hmm. but when you're in it it's like beautiful chaos makes sense yeah yeah or yeah you you can make the the math equation make sense in in your mind um 
that's what I love about cinema is like, oh, that person would totally get me because like they're showcasing the world how I see it. And then movies that do the total opposite of like, like a Room for a dream where it's like, well, I have no experience with drugs, but like, I hope I hope I don't have that experience. <laughs> yeah. But boy, do I like empathize with just how mm-hmm. awful that slippery slope could be for someone. Yeah. Um, and how Aronofsky sees the world or people who want to like push boundaries, both visually or push, you know, certain topics, like, you know, there's some things where I've watched a movie and I was like, oh, I don't even know how I feel about that topic. And like this brought up some good points. I know I talked to my one friend about Gone Girl and him and his wife watched Gone Girl and they had a huge talk because they were on two totally, I don't know what the talk was fully about, but they had a big kind of relationship conundrum because they were on like these two different sides of this argument started from that movie and it's just like wow like sucks for him but (laughs) but what a powerful thing that film can do that's i mean that that movie like thinking about it because i I could see where that that argument really could go like either way because obviously there's that those different sides to that story um yeah well um obviously that that, that's uh you know a, a great way to put that i i I always have a hard time like coming up with like, oh yeah, good good job. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you for answering the question. <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks for that. Got it, <laughs> got it down. Um, yeah. Well, Dylan, do you have any uh, final thoughts about uh, your film journey now, and or you know uh, any last minute things you want to talk about? Mm. <laughs> Just yeah, I love movies. I love how they make me feel. I'm a very like kind of an emotional like wear my heart on my sleeves kind of guy so like I love a movie that's gonna make me cry and move me and change me and like the reason why I love film so much is it's the medium that moves me the most it has all the ingredients you know it has music that you're like oh the score is so good like that alone made me cry or it has theater it has lighting it has like art direction and even like the props you're putting artwork in the film to mean something or to dress it up or just has it all and i just think it's just like it's a miracle that any film comes together and like so even when i'm talking about like uh interstellar didn't fully work for me or whatever it's like what an absolute privilege that we have that like Nolan got to make that and that he had the vision to make that and even if it didn't fully resonate with me it fully resonated with you and like that we can have those differing viewpoints like there is no like for the most part there is no like bad movie you know what I mean like just yeah, yeah. Some, some things don't work for you and you everyone has different interests and I just think that's so cool that like anyone could really be a filmmaker um with a lot of money uh (laughs) but like it's just so individual and it's it's not one choice it's a million tiny choices and like when i'm directing most of it is just from instinct of like what feels right what makes me go like oh yeah that just like looks how i want it to look like every film i do i try to make it feel new and different and build new rules and every time someone's like that looks like a dylan hershey project or whatever which i used to think that's a good compliment what what do i used used to think it was such a mean like awful thing to hear because i'm like no i'm trying to make something that feels so different and like i always found the worst part about my work like when Mm -hmm. i watch it it's like it's mine like i i I can't wait till my work looks like denny or like i could only hope right uh and uh I can't remember someone shared a quote with me or or something, but like the thing that's most important about everyone's art is the, the part that is them. Like when other people recognize you in your work or, or whatever, um, that's like, that's what's special. That's what people are gravitating towards. Like if anyone likes my work or I know like the thing I've had most success with is Constance and Constance is about my grandma. That's her name. And it's about my family and, and whatever. And that is as me as possible and it really resonated and it's like why was I and I still am getting over this but like so embarrassed of the like meanness of my own work when that's like I'm sure like David Fincher probably sees the 
the him in his work and, and mm. we all feel kind of icky about it but it's like it's yeah. only because you can't see your work from the audience's perspective ever that's just every artist and like as much as like yeah you want to kill that part of your art that's like the only reason why it's your art and why it works you know i don't know if i'm making sense but no, that that's makes, why I love the art and film yeah it makes complete sense i i mean uh it's it's hard to it's hard to look at your own your own work no matter what it is like um for me like one of i know i brought up the ghost story like i i i, I did my my thesis on it i talked about that um and it's it's really hard for me to get there it is um i knew there was a ghost somewhere and there was there was a ghost in this we captured a ghost that's really what this is going to blow up because we actually captured a real ghost on on live cool. on camera yeah that would be sweet i hope it actually <laughs> does look like it has a, a bed sheet on it and too so i only hope that's what ghosts look like like Casey, is that you? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, um, yeah, this is uh, this has been a, a real treat. Um, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, absolutely. And it was just honestly like a pleasure to meet you and like talk film. I know I'm not probably like the typical cinephile that you'd probably like have the easiest time interviewing because uh, I'm a little bit all over the place and just happen to be film i don't know how i got into film i don't know but i don't know i don't know how i got into it <laughs> me either but i oh, i appreciate your time and uh i i hope everyone who's watching this now i hope you uh can check out our, our last day as kids um and and donate to the kickstarter and 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 look it over and you know and help dylan out and and see that that project come to fruition i i mean you know, I, I hope, uh, you know, through all the things that you've done, um, you know, it, it comes uh, to further. And as like Mitch was saying, I remember him saying, like, maybe eventually this could be a full length film later on. Down that is that is the hope um, that uh, we're even, which I don't know if you want to mention on the show, but we're looking into potential avenues um, through grants of like, because it's looking like we're going to get funded, hopefully. Um a grant might be able to double what we have with the, the Kickstarter funding. And if that's the case, this could be a feature. Cause really we're just making a short feature because I was like, well, there's no way I'm going to get a hundred thousand dollars or like, I really think for my style of filmmaking, that's probably the lowest I could make a feature film on. Um, but uh, I don't know. There's some possibilities. We are considering that. And if not, the goal is to make this short film and pitch it to like, I would love for to make like an A24. Like that's, I guess, man, I totally missed that. That's like my jam. <laughs> a lot of like A24 right. I mean, we, we brought it up with Emo Ladybird, right? I mean, that's yeah, Jason. That's so that's true. yeah, we, we got around to it. So yeah. Well, um, like I said to everyone who's watching this, I hope you enjoyed uh, this special film journey. This has uh, been a lot of fun um, talking with Dylan. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, everyone can check out the links. I'll leave all those down in the description. Uh, where can everyone find you, by the way, if, if people want to reach out or, or look at your work and stuff? So Yeah, so if you want to just check out my work, like my production company is called Versa Films. So we have a website, versafilms.ca, or we're on Facebook, and Instagram at Versa Films. Um, if you're interested in specifically the film Our Last Day as Kids, we're on too many social media. <laughs> you know, we just started a TikTok like oh no two days ago. I know. <laughs> gotta and get like, huh? You gotta get the kids in. You, I mean, like, do you guys know what the, what this phase was of, of life, MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would be shocked at. Like, we started a TikTok two days ago, yeah. and we've gotten more attention on TikTok than any other social media after a month of campaigning. And I'm just like, what was I thinking? Not getting everyone's on, on there. Yeah, everyone's on there. Yeah, there's a whole emo community. Like, there's like emo oh, talk. And I was like, oh, I had no idea. So people were like, MySpace. Hell yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's it's crazy. We we just started. Yeah, two days ago and. Both the videos we uploaded have like 6,000 views. We almost have 1,000 followers. And it's like, what the heck? Like, just like <laughs> the glitch. It was like, I don't know. It's crazy. But I've I've also been, the face you just made or, or whatever about TikTok, I'm like, yeah, I'm that person. Like, I'm I'm done with getting new social media. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I'm just like, 
I waste too much of my time on this meaningless <laughs> crap and I like Instagram and whatever but like yeah it's I'm gonna use it for the media tool it is exactly for, yeah yeah, for these yeah. few things that I need, but otherwise, like I'm not just like scrolling through TikTok or, or whatever. Not yet, I guess. Not uh, yet. Do you have Do you have a MySpace up for this? I know I, that I like a mock. I, I saw Mitch put up a mock one. Uh, yeah, we've been making fake like mock uh, MySpaces for the whole crew. So we have, I think, like six or seven out that were all like, "Oh, what would you have had mm -hmm. as a teen or whatever?" Um, which has been a lot of fun, but. I honestly, I totally forgot that MySpace is actually a legitimate still running website until you just mentioned it right now. And I did, I did stumble upon, there's a website called Space Hay, which was an interesting find because it is MySpace from the mid 2000s. Uh, just someone copied that. Well, and it's just filled with like the most emo, like alt culture that like, that's all that's there. And it like, even looking at it like it, it's it almost feels like a parody or or just like <laughs> or like it's just you know you looking into the past because it's like oh the kids on there like you're still just the bands that existed at the time you know what i mean like yeah, only yeah. bands that would have existed on myspace it's not like they're like oh yeah spirit box like stuff like that it's like yeah. oh hell yeah um, alex is on fire <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's a time capsule yeah. but in modern times it's crazy well i'll definitely be putting all those links down here even the myspace stuff we'll, we'll see well uh, even the uh, tiktok even the tiktok um for all you kids out there uh remember it's our last day as it right <laughs> so um <laughs> yeah i had to put in some kind of dumb pun there um but uh i want to say once again thank you dylan for for joining on the film journey this has been uh, an absolute treat so um, so everyone who's watching this at home, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this was roller coaster is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So check out the links in the description. Like I said, if you want to continue this conversation and just talk more about like these different stories, uh, we'd love to see in the comment section, uh, as well, uh, and hear from you and we can interact there as well. Uh, give this video a like share, hit the notification bell, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. I'm not Jones and around.